Clarice took the VFX industry to a new level. It basically revolutionized a very important aspect in the workflow that many software such as Houdini, Maya and Max struggled with, especially when it comes to doing look dev, lighting and rendering scenes with billions of polygons, but for Clarice it was like a breeze. However, this made it a target for leading software developers such as Sinefax, the developers of Houdini and the industry at large. It was a surprise to many artists, but not so much to some working in the VFX industry. So in late April of 2023, Isotropic abruptly put its website into login only mode and removed its social media content, signaling a major change. Shortly after, existing consumers received an email declaring that after an incredible journey, Isotropic is pivoting to a new opportunity. All Isotropic products are now in the life and no longer available for purchase. The development of Clarice and Cnode is discontinued. This was surprising to many, but the company assured users that it would honor maintenance contracts and continue providing bug fix support to assist in transitioning to other software. So essentially after October 31st, 2023, no new Clarice features were to be released. This is the story of the fall of Clarice. I think one of the primary factors in Clarice's decline was the rapidly evolving landscape of VFX and 3D software. Like we talked about in the previous video, Clarice had initially carved out a niche by excelling at heavy scene assembly. It could attractively handle billions of polygons on CPU without choking, something that set it apart in the 2010s. However, by the early 2020s, computing tools and industry standards had caught up or surpassed Clarice's advantages. In particular, Cytofax Houdini, with its USD-based Solaris layout and lighting pipeline, which began offering similar capabilities for massive scene handling and native USD workflow integration. One VFX artist noted that Clarice's only serious advantage, which is the early adoption of USD and the ability to load billions of polygons, is now gone with Solaris and Houdini, which can do as much or more. Houdini's Karma XPU which is a modern CPU and GPU hybrid, and its support for multiple render engines via Hydra further eroded Clarice's edge. At the same time, the Foundry's Katana lighting software was widely adopted in studios, in part because it allowed integration of preferred renderers like Arnold, RenderMan, V-Ray, and so on. Clarice, by contrast, was all in one system tied to its own rendering engine. Hooking up your render engine to your lighting tool approach limited studio's flexibility and was never gonna fly in other studios, as it limited their options, one industry professional observed. In other words, studios didn't want to be locked into Clarice's renderer if they already had pipelines built around other render engines. Real-time lighting was a cool idea in Clarice, but limiting it to Clarice was a deal-breaker, that's why Katana took off, one artist explained. In addition to all of this, there was another problem for Clarice. The rise of real-time engines like Unreal Engine for certain visualization tasks, which also set new expectations for interactivity and ease of setup. By comparison, some users found Clarice's scene setup clunky and convoluted to a certain extent relative to modern tools. This is a sad reality for Clarice users. By 2020 to 2023, the market had evolved to the extent that Clarice's unique selling points were no longer unique. So computing software matched its capabilities while offering broader functionality in addition to better integration. Competing renderers and in-house engines advanced rapidly, leaving Clarice perceived as lagging. As one observer put it, if you are unable to update a render engine, others bypass you. Despite its strengths in handling complexity, Clarice was often criticized for shortcomings in other technical areas. Experienced users noted that Clarice had one killer feature, that is being good at handling complex and optimized scenes, but that was it. Other aspects of the software were less mature. Clarice always lacked polish and modern technology level in pretty much all the aspects, usability, rendering quality, render performance, and so on. 
wrote VFX artist Ludwig Kutney. He explained that while one could assemble and render huge scenes in Clarice, one had to give up too many things in return. For example, certain types of shots, notably indirect lit interiors, they were painfully failing due to Clarice's rendering limitations. This made Clarice suitable only for specific use cases, but frustrating or unusable for others, undermining its general appeal as a studio's primary lighting tool. Moreover, by bundling its own render, Clarice effectively required studios to adopt an additional rendering technology that over time fell behind industry leaders in quality and speed. Third-party rendering support was requested by users, and Isotropic reportedly discussed adding support for engines like Arnold, but instead, the company diverted efforts to developing the NG render, putting all their eggs into the NG basket. You see, NG's prolonged early access period, which was over a year, without a final release meant Clarice never got the modern GPU boost that it needed. In the meantime, mainstream renderers, like Arnold, V-Ray, Renderman, etc., and new hybrid renderers advanced significantly. This actually left Clarice's stack feeling obsolete or incomplete to many users by 2023. The irony was not lost on Isotropic, the developers of Clarice. Clarice's discontinuation was precipitated by the loss of its largest industry adopter, Double Negative, a leading VFX studio that had been a flagship user of Clarice, even helping propel its early success. You see, DNEG adopted Clarice for low development, lighting, and rendering around 2014, using it on major films, from Godzilla to Foundation. This gave Clarice credibility and a steady revenue source through enterprise licenses. However, in recent years, DNEG began transitioning away from the software, reportedly moving to Houdini and Solaris, and other tools. And recently, DNEG apparently decided to stop using Clarice altogether. And here is the problem. DNEG was Clarice's major lighthouse account. Its departure, no doubt, strongly influenced Isotropic's decision to hold development. In other words, losing the single largest client was a huge blow. One Redditor commented, It must have been a huge confidence blow to the development team to lose such a big studio. Beyond DNAG, the reach of Clarice in the broader industry remained limited. Aside from a new top VFX houses like ILM and DNAG, relatively few studios had fully adopted the software. Most other studios continued to rely on established combination of Houdini, Maya, and Max, in addition to Katana, rather than introducing Clarice into their pipeline. This meant a small user base and, by extension, limited license sales. Some in the community speculated that Clarice's development was no longer justifiable, meaning financially. I've heard only a couple of big studios were using Clarice. If they really stop development, I guess it doesn't make commercial sense to continue, one user wrote when the news broke, and I am compelled to agree with that. Isotropic's pricing may have further narrowed its appeal at roughly $1,000 per license annually for professional users. The software was actually an extra expense in an industry increasingly conscious of cost. As one VFX artist observed, ever since Solaris, Clarice made less and less sense, especially with their pricing. Nobody is gonna pay for that extra price of software that they don't actually need. Studios with tight margins or reluctant to invest in a specialized tool if its functionality could be covered by software they already owned, which makes sense. All these factors point to one thing. Market demand for Clarice simply stagnated, with new sales halting, especially after the company confirmed that it is gonna stop selling licenses. So the financial incentive to continue heavy development simply wasn't there, especially after losing their key clients. And there you have it, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.